Here's something that Big Yeast doesn't want you to know. Yeast is alive. It grows and it reproduces. We don't ever need to buy yeast again. We can grow our own. I've been doing it for years. It's extremely simple and I'll show you how. My name is Joe and welcome to Off Grid Solitude. And today I'm going to talk about yeast. Yeast that you buy in the store isn't all that expensive. My biggest issue is that I'm always running out of yeast and I'm about a 30 minute drive from the nearest store. I don't want to have to run out just to get some yeast. So I make sure I have yeast on hand at all times by keeping a starter. The process of making a yeast starter is really easy and you may already be familiar with it if you've made sourdough or watched some sourdough videos. But this isn't a sourdough. We're using store-bought yeast. I'm taking the yeast that I buy from the store and I'm keeping it alive indefinitely. And it should keep making the same delicious bread that that first batch of yeast did. A packet of yeast contains a huge amount of yeast. They kind of idiot-proof for us. They put so much yeast in here that even if you screw up your recipe or don't give it enough time to rise, you'll still get some decent bread. Also, the company wants to make sure that the yeast survives sitting on the shelf for a year or if it gets too hot or something happens to it, you'll still have some left alive in here to grow your bread. But I never use a whole packet like they tell you to. For a normal size recipe of maybe three cups of flour, I'll use about a quarter packet. And for a smaller recipe like a personal pizza, I just use a couple grains. And maybe for a giant batch, six or eight cups of flour, I'll use half a packet. But I never use the whole packet. To make sure the bread rises, I just pay a little bit more attention. I proof the yeast like normal. I add the yeast to warm water, maybe a tablespoon of sugar or flour, mix it up, and make sure it activates. It should get a little frothy or at the very least smell like yeast. Then I add just a portion of the flour that the recipe asks for. Let's say the recipe asks for one cup warm water, three cups flour. I activate the yeast. Once it's activated, I add about one cup of flour. I let the yeast grow, and when I see some activity there, I add the rest of the flour and all my other ingredients. Takes a little bit more time, but I'm always sure that the bread rises fully. And if you baby your yeast like this, even a tiny amount of yeast will be enough for a big batch of bread. I've been doing it this way for so long, I forget how I started. I think it was just because I kept running out of yeast. But eventually I realized I didn't need to keep buying the yeast. So I began making starters. I watched all those sourdough videos and thought to myself, this will work with regular yeast too. The process is really, really simple. You take a small amount of yeast. A few grains is enough like this. If you don't have any grains left, let's say you accidentally put it all in your recipe, then just take a pinch of dough. After the dough has grown, but before you bake it, just take a pinch of it like this. Mix it with a small amount of water, um, about two tablespoons, and an equal amount of flour. Because we're dealing with such a small amount of starter, and that yeast is already strong, it should grow really quickly, probably about 20 minutes, once you see that yeast is alive and growing, it should have risen a little or be bubbling, or at the very least it smells very yeasty. We can increase the amount of our starter. So we added two tablespoons the first time, now we'll add four more. So add four tablespoons of water and four tablespoons of flour and mix it all together. And let it grow, and it should grow fast again, another 20 minutes or an hour. And you can keep repeating these steps until you have as much starter as you need. But this should probably be enough to last you for a while. You only use about a tablespoon at a time for your recipes. Just keep the jar in the fridge with the cap on loosely. This starter will keep in the fridge for a very long time, months, if not years. And when you need some yeast, you just pull it out and grab a tablespoon or so of uh, starter and put it in your recipe. Make sure you use a clean spoon so you don't contaminate anything. And you just put the starter jar back in the fridge. As you use up your starter and you realize you need more, 
just add some more flour and water. But this time, instead of a one-to-one -one ratio, put twice as much flour as you do water, a two-to-one ratio. And you make what they call a stiff starter. But if you keep making that thin starter with that much water, the yeast is going to get used to having such high hydration levels. But if you make this stiff starter, the yeast is used to a drier environment and it'll be as strong as it ever was. Also, the yeast can be dried and saved that way if you want. Just take a couple spoonfuls of your starter and spread out real thin on a piece of uh, wax paper or aluminum foil or even a clean plate and let it dry. And uh, it dries up nicely, as you can see here, and it crumbles nicely. And I can save this now in an envelope, and when I need it, I just crumble up a bit into my recipe. It's a great way to keep yeast for long term. It's really dry out here in the desert, so everything dries really fast. But if you're in a wetter climate, you can mix a little oatmeal to the starter or some uh, wheat bran before you spread it out, and that'll help dry it a little bit. You can also put a fan on it to help dry it, but don't use any heat because that'll probably kill the yeast. This yeast starter is very forgiving. Heat will kill yeast, but it survives pretty much everything else, so you don't have to be too careful with it. The only thing you really need to worry about is contamination. Be sure you use a clean jar and clean spoons and things like that. Keep the lid on when you're not using it. Maybe a little bit loosely because it does produce carbon dioxide. It may, it may pop your jar eventually if your lid is on too tight. But if you do find the starter turning strange colors, really bad smells, or fuzzy with mold, just throw it out and start again. Uh, the yeast isn't that expensive. I like it. It's kind of a halfway step to self-sufficiency and frugality. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one.